Good afternoon and welcome to the Westbrook College Television Network. Hello everybody, I'm Jay Hopper for our second trip here inside the state of Vermont. We're at the Hornet Dome today where the Westbrook College Wildcats get set to take on Linden State. Linden State coming in after an impressive win yesterday over St. Joe's. They were led by Jamie Kingsbury who had 28 points. You harken back to these two teams' first meeting back at the Finley Recreation Center in Portland. Kingsbury was huge in that one, as was Sean Reed. Reed, a Mainer from inside the Pine Tree State. He was big against Westbrook College and he always plays well against the Wildcats. Should be an interesting matchup today as Linden State has secured the number five spot. They'll play St. Joe's in the first round of the Mayflower Conference Tournament as will their women's team. So kind of an ironic situation where both the four and five seeds by St. Joe's and Linden State. In this game here this afternoon, of course, Derek Vogel huge yesterday. He was the first time these two teams met. Vogel had 40 points in the 115-100 win for Westbrook College. Vogel, of course, approaching the 3,000 point plateau now only 41 points shy of that. He should get that in the first round of the postseason as Westbrook College will host number seven Notre Dame this coming Wednesday. This one, though, a good one. After yesterday's win over Johnson State, the Wildcats are ready and poised to make it a clean sweep here inside the Green Mountain State. We'll take a break. Back with the opening tip-off right after this. Welcome back to the Hornet Dome. You get a look at head coach Jim Grafham, who has coached his team now to four consecutive 20-plus wins. The seniors of Derek Vogel, Andy Lennon, and Corey McClure, 132 in their four years at Westbrook College. The Wildcats winning their 20th game of the season yesterday. They are now 20 and 11 on the season and 10 and 3 inside the conference. And the Wildcats with a win over Johnson State yesterday. It was their first win there in three years. And of course, this senior day here at Linden State, their head coach, Tim Kelly, of course, getting set to reward and honor his seniors. But today we had a chance to sit down back at the hotel room with seniors Andy Lennon and Derek Vogel. And we had a chance to talk about a variety of things, but first and foremost was the matchup with Linden State. And this is what Andy Lennon had to say about the game here this afternoon with the Hornets. Today's game is uh, obviously important because it's the end of the season and uh, you want to finish on a high, especially going into the tournament. I look at the uh, last game of the regular season as just a building block into the tournament. Um, we want to enter the tournament on a high, so um, this game means a lot to the team. Um, means a lot to me too, um, just because um, I enjoyed playing so much here at Westbrook, and I just want to end it on a great note. A lot of fun sitting down and talking to Andy Lennon, a great personality, a great team player, and of course a tremendous leader. Also had a chance to talk with Derek Vogel his partner in crime in a lot of different areas, not only on the basketball court, but off the court. And we talked about Derek Vogel and his thoughts on the best game that he's had or the best game that he remembers playing in. And of course, Vogel had a lot of different interpretations of this, not one particular game, but here's what Derek Vogel had to say. Um, right now, I remember Nationals last year. It's still pretty uh, vivid in my head. I can. Uh, remember the game coming down to a final shot and I can remember a couple breaks that didn't go our way but uh, I can remember it so well I can't wait to get there again and uh, see if we can change things this year. And now the starting five for the Wildcats and here he is the Melrose kid Andy Lennon number 11. Corey McClure senior out of Lisbon Maine. Eric Werntgen the junior out of Essex Junction Vermont. Bob Davies, the sophomore out of Orchard Beach. And All-American Derek Vogel, the senior out of Cumberland, Maine. And approaching the 3,000-point plateau. 
should get that in the first round of the playoffs at the Finley Recreation Center. Looking forward to that. Starting five now for the Linden State Hornets. Alex Frankel, Sean Reed, Jamie Kingsbury, Rob Gilbert, and Lucas Dunbar. Might have said at the outset, Reed, of course, is a Mainer, but also two other ones in Gilbert and Dunbar, both out of Harbor, Maine. Northeast Harbor and Southwest Harbor are Gilbert and Dunbar. Just about set for the final regular season game for the Westbrook College Wildcats and here against Linden State. The Hornet Dome, a very nice facility and beautiful picturesque hills of Vermont. More appropriate term might be mountains of Vermont. It is absolutely gorgeous up here. And we've enjoyed the scenery and the basketball so far. 3-0 are the men's and women's combined so far. The women sweeping two very hard-fought close games over Johnson State and Linden State. And Wildcats coasted to an 81-60 victory yesterday over Johnson State, looking to keep the weekend perfect. Working, jumping up, wins the tap for Vogel. Vogel, three ball. Off the back of the basket, and Working puts it right back out to Vogel. Lennon sends it on top for Davies. Goes for Corey McClure. His shot, no good. And the rebound taken down by Frankel. Kingsbury drives baseline. Goes up, no good. And the foul on Rob Gilbert. 6'5", freshman out of Northeast Harbor, Maine. Commits the foul as Andy Lennon goes to the boards and collects his first rebound at 13 in the game against Atlantic Union this past Thursday. Workin pulls up, goes for Vogel. Vogel gets fouled, turns, twist, and drops it. DV with the BC and with the bucket. Vogel had three three-point plays yesterday with the bucket and the foul, the old-fashioned way, if you will. This one kicks out. You hear Vogel grunt. 2 0, 19 20 to play, first half. Sean Reed whips it back over for Kingsbury. Kingsbury will try from the corner. It's a good outside shooter. Gets his own board back, goes up and in. Kingsbury had 28 yesterday in the win over St. Joe's. They'll meet St. Joe's this coming Wednesday. Save for Lennon, back for Vogel, goes up. No call as Vogel goes to the floor. Back comes Linden State. Reed steps behind the arc, 
No good. Weak side rebound. Taken down by the Hornets. And the free ball up. No good. And Davies fighting for it. Finally gets it. Corey McClure with a save. Inside for Werken. Double fakes. Takes. Makes. 4-2. Frankel takes, no good. Work in the rebound. Lennon asking for it here on this side. Down low for Working. Davies a three. No good. Vogel the rebound. Vogel spins around up and under. The All American. Foul called on Eric Merkin. Merkin telling us this morning that his high school girls team has won 51 in a row on the hard floor. Their high school girls basketball team, 51 straight at Exodus Junction High School. Reed's put back, rattles in and out, and Merkin gets the rebound. Has it tapped out of his hands, but it'll be Wildcat basketball. And his ski team swept yesterday, both men's and women's sweeping. Vogel between the leg dribble, gets contact. No call again, and he knocks it down. Davies goes for the steal as Kingsbury pulls up. No good. Push off inside, no call there. Again, no call. Bad bounce. The Wildcats will take it. Lennon out ahead. Rob Gilbert called for the foul. He doesn't like it. I might agree with him there, but the officials had missed about three fouls in a row prior, and they finally, anticipating a foul, call it there. I'm surprised that Lennon didn't give a head fake. He went right up, and Gilbert was right with him. Andy Lennon and Derek Vogel showing some talent up here in the women's game with a little color commentary and nicely done. They're so versatile. Andy Lennon makes both free throws. He'll take a break as Chris McKenney checks in. He had six points yesterday in the win over Johnson State. Two threes for McKenney yesterday. Steal by Werken and a blocking foul called on Alex Frankel, 6'2 senior out of Shelton, Connecticut. Werken, he struggled inside the state of Vermont, saying his trip's over here. He's had some difficulty putting up the numbers he'd like to. Of course, this is his home state. Essex Junction about 40 miles northwest of here. Down low for Lotus. Lotus has it partially blocked. Tipped out. Tipped up ahead nicely. Kingsbury coming in. He has Reed with him, and he just goes to the hole. Big swing there. Long court pass for McKinney. He gets pushed off the ball. The referees are just not wanting to call much con contact. They are not calling the bump, so Wildcats will be advised here to play hard. Take the bumps. Don't be afraid to make a few bumps of their own. Reed's baseline shot, no good. Lotus the rebound. Gets it for McKinney. Vogel, three. Bang. Derek Vogel with nine points already. He started slow the last two games, but finished with 28 yesterday. Game against Atlantic Union. Timeout on the floor, and we'll check in with head coach Jim Grafham in the Wildcats timeout here. Now, well, listen to me. 
uh, 23 switch, okay? And uh, the big guys, when you, when you get the ball, Chris is going to take off. He's going to be in the middle of the court. So if you can throw it over the guy, fine. If not, then I'll let the bat on the on the count. Oh, I understand. I understand. I want, I, I want them to have nobody yeah. on the boards because we can send the two guys with you. That's what I want. Okay. 23 yeah. switch. We Let's go, fellas. Here we go, guys. Stay down now on the trap. Coach Grafham sends out Chris McKenney, Matt Mackey, Nate Esty back into the lineup after a two-game suspension. Derek Bogle and Chris Lotus. Reed. He's tough. He's good. Sean Reed, 6-1 junior out of Cushing, Maine. Played for head coach Jim Graffin's brother in high school. 13-6 our score with 15-29 to go first half. Reed completes the three-point play. Travel called on Lotus. So another turnover by the Wildcats. Nice dish down for Lyons. He misses. He had contact. Referee's at least consistent. Oh, great save. Lyons. Look at him run the floor. He is all alone under the paint. And now they call Kingsbury on the out of bounds as Vogel will get a break. And Nosek checks in along with Andy Lennon. Three ball, way off, and tipped out and controlled. Up ahead for Sean Reed. He'll coast in, collect two more. 19, excuse me, 13-9. Wildcats lead by four. Great movement of the basketball, and what a play by Nosek. Oh my. He had his body at a 45 degree angle, and able to Convert coming in and went to the floor hard. Got the foul. Was sick, a sophomore out of York, Maine, and sat out a good portion of the season with a broken foot. Free throw goes in and out, and picked up and controlled by the Hornets. Aaron Wiley, number 12, with the ball now. He just checked in. Dunbar driving on Lennon. Wiley will take the three, no good. Corey McClure fights for the rebound. Davies, a nice job at getting it out of there. But Hornets and a three from Reed. And again, just taking a tough bounce. Turnover committed by Dunbar. Lennon drives in, goes up, no good. SD fights for the board, comes away with it. Gets it back, tries to go down low and has it blocked. Both teams a little sloppy with the basketball here. Right, 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 right. 
Davies taps out of bounds from behind. Aaron McClure checks in. AM had a big game yesterday, 12 points, two dunks. One of his best offensive performances. Riley drives, tries to kick, has it blocked. Travel call by Lennon. He thought he had a foul call. Nothing. Referees have been very unwilling to give the fouls up. Spinning, driving move by Austin. Won't go down. The Wildcats out ahead to Lennon. Goes in. Won't go down. No sick though. The rebound. Gets it for Aaron McClure. Goes up. He's fouled. Good effort by Ben Nosek. He's really asserting himself here in the first half. Wildcats leading 59, 12.42 to go. Vogel will check back in. He had 40 points the last time these two teams met. A 115-100 win. Aaron Bricks, the first free throw. This is again, Corey McClure saves younger brother by keeping the ball alive and it's knocked out by the Hornets. Corey McClure from the foul line. Bang. 17-9. Corey had five points yesterday. Nice pass across for Lions, and he misses the layup. Vogel goes in, two more. Well, if you think about it, Vogel was only 41 points shy of that 3,000 point plateau, and of course the unbelievable record. And he commits the foul, trying to make the steal out on top as the pass came from Matt Carthy. But Vogel, 41 shy coming in. He had 40 against these guys the last time, and if he equals or betters that number. We can see the record today, and I know the coaching staff does not want to see that happen today. They want to take it back to the Finley Recreation Center and have it reach there and have the home fans enjoy. Maybe a record that will stand for a long, long time. Shot misses badly, and there's Lyons again. This time he gets it to go. Kerry Lyons, a 6'5 freshman out of Milton, Vermont. Corey McClure, foul, flips it up. Count it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. CM with a big time play there. He was turned around and the head fake got the player up in the air and he started up, got packed hard, able to lay it up, give it a nice little kiss off the glass. 19 11. 11 25 to go in the first half. Jay Harper with you on the Westbrook College Television Network. The Wildcats get set to defend the Mayflower Conference title that they've owned the last two years. Flores free throw. That rim off the tight. Really kicking some stuff out. By Mike McCarthy. Vogel fakes a three, steps in, goes for Merkin. Vogel will take another three ball. No good, Reed, the weak side rebound.
Hornet Dome here. A great gym. Oh, three taken by McCarthy. The tip up, no good. And Vogel comes away with the rebound. Davies tries the left-handed pass for the streaking Eric Wernken. That's a difficult pass to try. Anybody's ever played the game and played it a lot, you know how hard it is to make a pass of that caliber with the offhand. Kingsbury the drive. Call the foul out on top before the shot. That only the fourth team foul on the Wildcats. They lead 21-14 with 10.08 to go in the half. Corey McClure will sit down. He has four first half points. Should be on the baseline. They thinking about shooting free throws. Only fourth team foul on Westbrook College. Kingsbury from way downtown, way off, but there's those long rebounds that Lennon talked about before the game. Reed a rebound, back up and in. Sean Reed, so strong. <laughs> Davies a three, no good. Hilchi fights on the glass, and they call him for the foul. Steve Huntington checks in for his first action of the day, the freshman out of Portland. Nice baseline drive by Kingsbury, but he can't make it go. Kenny a three. Nails nylon and it's 24-16. Nice ball movement by the Hornets and Sean Reed. Pull up jumper by Workin. Got it. Oh, how Huntington got out of that trap, able to get a nice pass up. Thought he was going to call timeout. McCarthy thinks about the three, leaves for Reed all alone on the baseline. Sean Reed having another big game against Westbrook College. He did last time, too. Plays well against his home state opponents. Huntington, the three, no good. Vogel's tip. Oh, my. Twenty-eight, twenty. Westbrook College by eight. Three by Reed, no good. Huntington the rebound gets it ahead for McKenney. McKenney pulls up, got it. Thirty, twenty. Kenny now with five. Turnaround shot pretty by Gilbert. High arcing shot. Pulls the Hornet back within eight. Huntington left alone. Didn't have his feet right. 
Kenny will take another three. Got hit. High bounce. Hilchi able to keep it alive, but coming out of there is McCarthy. He pulls up. No good. Put back by Gilbert. No good. It comes into the hands of Vogel. Out ahead for McKenney. Up for Vogel. Vogel hangs, recocks, and almost gets it down. And working, playing defensive back. Great job at knocking that one out of bounds. Good end-to-end -end action here. High-scoring affair. The last time these two teams met. Expect to see much of the same. That win over St. Joe's yesterday. The Hornets are really scoring some points. They won 92-67. Pull-up jumper in the paint. Won't go down. Rebound put back again. No good. And Vogel comes away with it. Up ahead for Lennon. He gets pushed by Kingsbury. It's Darren Austin, the 6'2 sophomore, had two attempts in there. Good plays and good shots both times, but the ball just wouldn't fall for him. Austin wears number 20 and has the headband on. He's out of Westerly, Rhode Island. Lennon misses the one and one. The ball loose on the floor. Lennon gets it back. Huntington, a long three. Won't go in. Lotus fights. Austin, the rebound. Huntington steals. Oh, what a move by Andy Lennon. 32-22, and you hear the coaching staff of Westbrook College pick up their intensity. Lennon got run over. Scream, no call. What a pass for Vogel. The two seniors and the two best of friends, Vogel and Lennon, combined for another prolific bucket. And the Hornets turn it over. Dunbar trying to get it ahead for Gilbert. Austin the steal, a two on one, now three on one. Lotus gets back. Lotus can't get over in time. Aaron Wiley gets the bucket. Vogel left alone for a three. Bang! And that's tickling some twine. You can still hear it chuckling. It just knock nylon and nothing but. 37-26 as Vogel having a huge first half. And Austin with a putback. Vogel throws this one away as the Wildcats a little out of sync on that offensive possession. 4.42 to go in the half. Wildcats up nine. The lead has been between eight and 11 here in the last four or five minutes. Great end to end action. Foul called on Davies out front. Buzzer goes off, but. The referees haven't been calling any fouls, and now all of a sudden they're starting to call them as Derek Vogel gets a breather. That foul on Lennon will send Lucas Dunbar to the free throw line. One and one. This is that one. Davies gets the rebound. Puts it up for Lennon. Lennon pulls up for the free throw line. No good. Lotus the rebound. Oh, 
Otis with great effort, but he was triple teamed inside the paint and couldn't get the ball out of there. And we'll walk the other way and send Aaron Wiley, the 6'4 senior out of Newport, Vermont. Great release and rotation. It's now a six point game. Davies, another three attempt, won't go down. Bob struggling a bit from behind the arc here in this one. Kicked out of bounds by Lions. They'll reset the shot clock. Fresh 35. Shot clocks are in the corners on the floor, opposite ends of the court. Great facility here. You look at the scoreboard and it's got all the players' names and had all the women's names. And okay. Mackey will try a three. Oh, it's in the hole. Matt Mackey, a team favorite and Coaches love the young kid. Davies with a great move, won't fall. Lennon working, Mackey comes out with it. Goes back up and in. Matt Mackey with five straight. Wildcats back by 11. What a move by Davies, but it wouldn't fall for him. Wiley struggling, but gets it up. Austin, nice cross court pass. Leaves it for McCarthy, three back. Matt McCarthy ahead for Aaron McClure. The dunk won't fall. Lennon gets the rebound and has it knocked out of his hands. Tremendous end-to-end -end action here. Wiley floats in, won't fall. Lotus fights for the board, gets it, kicks it up for Lennon. Three on two unfolding. Davies through the paint. Time out on the floor. And Coach Grafham gets send, set to send Derek Vogel back in. You see Vogel coming back out on the floor. We had a chance to talk to both Vogel and Andy Lennon as you see the two side by each, as they say down in the Sockle Biddeford area. But two great competitors, two great friends. And we talked to them about the potential of Vogel breaking the 3,000 point mark at home in the first round of the playoffs. And this is what both Vogel and Andy Lennon had to say. Uh, it'll be a nice feeling. It'll be nice to do it in front of the crowd, in front of all the people that have supported us for four years. Um, but again, it's just got to be something that's got to come in the flow. Um, that's going to be a, a huge game, regardless if we win by 20 or 30. It's, it's got to just come in the flow. And uh, as long as that happens, then it'll be a, a happy moment. But if it's something that we have to work to get, then I'd rather not even have it. Derek's 3,000 point uh, milestone is going to be very important to this team. Um, and to me, especially playing alongside him for four years, um, he's just worked so hard and he's made himself a great player, probably the best player that this state's ever seen and might ever see. Um, 3,000 points is a lot of points and I don't know if anyone will ever be able to score that many points again. And uh, he's just done a lot to uh, put this team where it is and put Westbrook College where it is. Jay Harper, Steve Poulos with you at the Hornet Dome in Lindenville, Vermont. And Linden State trailing 42-34. Wildcats send out Vogel, Workin, Corey McClure, Matt Mackey, and Matt, excuse me, and Chris McKenney. Wildcats come out with their half-court trap defense and nice job at dribbling through it. But the shot up, well, it will fall. Kerry Lyons gets a break there. And it's now just a six-point lead. Linden State tough and hanging in there. Vogel dribbles, window wash. Good. Vogel having a huge first half.
Lions thinks about it, but kicks it across. McCarthy will try another three. Knocks Nylon. Well, I guess his relatives are sitting just to my right. Vogel, nice pass for Corey McClure. McClure goes up, won't go down. McCarthy the rebound and the push. He splits the defense, won't go in. Matt Mackey's got Vogel out on the wing. Coach Kraft I'm looking at Matt Mackey, not too pleased. I think he would have liked to see Mackey kick the ball to the middle of the floor. He had Vogel streaking the left side, uncovered. It's only a five-point game with a minute 35 to play in the half. Matt McCarthy has hit a few big threes, and I would have to guess that Tim Kelly, the head coach of Linden State, just added him to the roster for the second half of the season. And McCarthy buries another one. Forty-four, forty-one. Vogel a three, no good. And McCarthy the rebound. He is taking over. Matt McCarthy, a freshman out of Ludland, Vermont. It's four threes here in the first half. Ball tipped on the way through, and Lions the last one to touch it. Wildcats have led most of the half by eight to 11 points, but it's only a three-point game. The lob from Vogel kicks it back out. Corey McClure, Matt Mackey, another three. I'm up short, Vogel tips it over for Werken, and Eric Werken will draw the foul. Good effort by both Derek Vogel and Eric Werken. Timeout on the floor. I believe it's just a 20-second timeout. Let's see. <laughs> Quick 20-second timeout. And Junior Eric Werken at the free throw line. He had eight points yesterday in the win over Johnson State. His mother, father, and brother all along for the game. Merkin makes them both, and it's 46-41. Five-point lead with under 30 seconds now to play in the half. Nice try by Kingsbury, won't go down. A long outlet ahead for Vogel, can he get there? He does, tries to save it. And good job by Vogel and McKinney. He's working with that quick outlet pass, just a little bit ahead of Derek Vogel. Down to 10 seconds, plenty of time. Merkin's gonna have to take it. Maybe one extra pass, Vogel gets hit. No call at the buzzer. Excellent first half of basketball here at the Hornet Dome in Lindenville, Vermont. A score, Westbrook College 46. Linden State 41. We'll take a break. Back with halftime right after this.
Welcome back to the Hornet Dome. Get a look at assistant coach Mike Johnson rallying the troops back in. Wildcats leading 46-41 after 20 minutes of play. An excellent played first half. And this morning we had a chance to visit with Andy Lennon and Derek Vogel. We talked about it throughout. And we talked about the fact of going once again to the Nationals. The Wildcats looking for their third straight visit to Idaho. And of course, the Mayflower Conference Tournament coming up this week. And it's very, very big. And we asked Derek Vogel, what would happen if something went wrong along the way? And how would he, the team and himself take it? Derek Vogel. Uh, it would hurt. It would hurt a lot not to go to Nationals again. Um, for the third year in a row just because we have been so successful. We really should have gone the, uh, our first year, our freshman year. We had a great team. But if we don't go, I'd like to know that we didn't go because a better team beat us when we put 100% on the floor. And uh, if a team can go out and beat us when we're all playing on all cylinders, then I tip my hat to them. But I don't really think there's anyone that can when we're playing together. Get set to start second half action. Jay Harper along with Steve Poulos says, Linden State starts with the basketball. The Wildcats come out playing man-to-man -man defense. Starting five on the floor, working with a rejection on Dunbar down low. Scoring that first half, Vogel had 20 points, two threes. Six points for Werken, five apiece for Chris McKinney and Matt Mackey as Gilbert collects. Corey McClure will take the three. Got it. He nails nylon. Nothing but twine. Reed coming back. Partially blocked by Werken. Two in a row. A whip for Vogel. Vogel steps in. Takes. No good. The long rebound kicks out. And Kingsbury running with Reed. Reed. Sean Reed had 11 first half points. Tied with Matt McCarthy who had 11. McCarthy had three threes and one deuce. One of those threes must have been just inside the arc. Call a foul on Gilbert. He wanted the jump ball call. Didn't get it. We saw that officially yesterday at Johnson State, who traveled with us. Corey McClure with five straight points. He had four in the first half. He's now up to nine. A three and a bucket down low. The Wildcats lead. And a push off called on Dunbar. Corey McClure has the pass go through his hands. Scoreboard says 51-45. I'm trying to figure out if that's correct or not. It was messed up for a second. That foul should be on working, I believe. It is. That'll be a shooting foul. That'll send Alex Frankel to the free throw line. Second foul on Workin. Team's first here in the second half. One of two for Frankel. 51-47, and pass stolen by Reed. He tries to push, Davies knocks it out of bounds. Scores actually 51-46. Dunbar takes from the corner way off. Long outlet for Lennon. Somehow able to catch, but his behind-the-back pass for the trailer, Derek Vogel, miscues, and back come 
Linden State, three ball by Kingsbury. Rattles in and out, up and in. And a big three hit by Jamie Kingsbury. He is a three ball specialist. Bogle will try a three. No good, Rutkin flies in. Kingsbury another one. Oh yeah, and Kingsbury feels it. He's like the Kingsbury Doughboy. Feels so good. Linden State with the back-to-back -back threes now lead 52-51. Wildcats retake the lead 53-52. called on the baseline on Andy Lennon. Kingsbury just catching and firing. Oh boy. Kenny shot up, no good. Bodies flying everywhere, no calls. Kingsbury actually comes inside the arc and misses, should have stayed out top. Nice move, down low. Kerry Lyons draws the foul, and actually it's Frankel, 24, and a timeout asked for by Westbrook College. They trail now 55-53, and free throws coming for Linden State. Pressure on, but we need to make sure to win the pass okay? Because the edges are just down the floor. The other thing is this, let's get the ball inside down on the other end. So we can, what, what's happening, we're taking the first uh, primitive jump shot, which is fine. You get a good foul on that, that's, that's okay. Sure. But just, you, you just, just keep the thing inside and then, and then they go back out. I don't, I don't know what, what, whether we need to do that. Uh, how about pro or something like that? You guys open the hot. Yeah. Even, even if it's a zone, we, we, we can run that. See, see what you guys. Okay. Yeah. 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 Four guys go. off the line. Right here, go, go. One, two, three. Wildcats. Okay. Let's go. Coach Graffham very poised and calm inside the timeout huddle. And Linden State has gone on a big run here to start the second half. Played just over three minutes and they've outscored Westbrook College 14-7. Have a two point lead and Alex Frankel has two free throws coming. You can see when Jamie Kingsbury gets it going, what he can do. He had a great game against Westbrook College the first time they met as well. Him and Reed were the two big scorers in that one. Kingsbury had 28 yesterday in the win over St. Joe's, and safe to guess he probably had four or five threes in that one. Kenny fakes the three, goes baseline, leaves it out for Workin, touches over for Vogel. Lennon so quick, has his shot partially blocked. Gilbert called for the travel. Rob Gilbert, freshman out of Harbor, Maine. Six foot five and a lot of skills. This is a very talented and a lot of younger players mixed in with some good senior players. They could make some noise in the tournament. And Kenny's three, no good. And a rebound by Lyons. Leaves it off for Dunbar. Dunbar traveled and they missed that one. Down low for Reed. Draws the foul, makes the bucket. And it's suddenly a four. Let's see, this scoreboard a little slow in posting up the scores. I I'm waiting to say the score because I'm not sure the clock is right. Wildcats need a bucket here. Now 
now the clock does get right. It is 16.53, and that's what I thought. They had it only at 57. They didn't put up the bucket that counted. So a seven-point lead for Linden State. In the paint for Derek Bogle. He draws the foul. He'll shoot two. Nate Esty will check back in. Esty sitting out two games for a disciplinary suspension. And back today, played a few moments in the first half. A couple of rebounds, but that was it. Vogel, one of two, 60-54. Nice pass in for Lions. Vogel loses it, Lions makes the steal. He's standing on the out-of-bounds line, so the Wildcats will get it back, 62-54 as Linden State has erupted here in the opening moments of the second half. Coach Graffin was well aware they're playing well and could be on a high after the big win over St. Joe's yesterday. Alley -oop. Lotus comes away, that puts it up. No foul called, he got whacked right on the hand. Back come the Hornets, but they throw it away. Lotus off for Davies. Go down low for Esty, goes over for Vogel. Vogel, a jam. Great interior passing by the Wildcats. Super unselfish play. Esty with that extra pass. And got the dunk for his teammate Vogel. Dunbar pulls up, won't go down. Lotus the rebound. Off for Esty, comes in. Traveling call, I didn't see it. Wow. Six point lead for Linden State. Matt McCarthy checks back in. He had three threes in the first half, 11 points. Foul called on Austin, trying to set the pick. You gotta travel Route 93 to learn how to set those picks, huh, Steve? Talked about it yesterday briefly on our drive over here on Friday night in the snowstorm. Some lady just stopped right in the travel lane and was out cleaning her windshield. 20 cars stopped behind her. She shut down the whole right side. We came by in the passing lane, loving it. It was a great screen. Nate Esty, a nice pass out on top from Workin, and it's a four-point lead for Linden State. Esty playing the good defense. Carthy, ooh, a little dribble. Davey stays on the defense, so does Esty, working his tail off. Wiley comes in, the dish down pass, ball loose on the floor, and Workin, excuse me, Vogel can't pick it up. Up and under move. Nice one by Austin. Won't go down. Gave him the timeout. He's up in the air and gave him the 20-second timeout. Well, we saw a nice call the other day when they gave Andy Lennon that. I don't know how they did. I think that rule needs to be clarified or stated a little bit better. There should be a rule where you, you need to be able to hold that timeout for at least a solid second. I, I don't know how if you just float that up there and you're just about to land, and the officials give you the timeout. Uh, it's all interpretation and judgment call anyway, so I don't know if that would help much either. Davies getting it going with McCarthy and McCarthy with a dribbling clinic, but Bob Davies would have nothing to do with it. Tenacious defense stayed right there in the face. And Davies regroups. He was a little upset as he got tangled up with McCarthy. Oh, 
Offensive foul called on the baseline. Not sure I like that call, but score stays at. Foul called on Bob Davies, and he just stares at the official. State. Nice job of bringing McCarthy will try a three. No good. Lions the rebound. His put back no good. The outlet up ahead. Wildcats got numbers. Nice bounce pass from McKetty, and he can't get it to go. Great pass from Vogel. Lions misses work in a good defense. Comes away with the rebound. Vogel coming back. Body control bucket. 62-60, the Wildcats back within two. Lions out ahead, and he'll drop it in. Westbrook College a little fatigued on that possession. Couldn't get back defensively as they are putting everything they have out on the floor. McKenney a three, no, tit, touch, bang! Oh, <laughs> that's nice. Team basketball being played here on the floor by both teams, but Westbrook College really Working the basketball, a great interior, unselfish passing. Vogel <laughs> completes the three-point play, and it's 64-62. Linden State still leading by two. Actually, now they put up the score very slow on the clock, and I have to really pay attention. 64-63 with a three-point play, a one-point game. Kingsbury, Wiley, Reed, Frankel, and Gilbert out for Linden State. Davies, another steal. Outlet pass for Vogel. Reed back. Reed reaches in. and Foul called. It's actually on Alex Frankel. Vogel. Whacked window and had the bucket going down again. <laughs> Foul called this time, I believe, on Sean Reed. And it will be on Reed. And it's now a one on one situation. ties it up. Wildcats have come back from that brief seven point lead put up by Linden State after leading by five at the half. And they take the lead back, 65-64 as Vogel continues to shine. And the referees now really starting to call it very, very tight. They see things getting chippy and trying to keep it in perspective, both teams now with 12.19 to go in the second half have surpassed the limit. And it's one and one the rest of the way. And of course, two free throws after the 10th foul. Frankel continues to knock him down from the line. 6-2 senior out of Shelton, Connecticut. from Vogel. Skies gets hit, won't go down, gets his own board, goes back up and under. Two more of Vogel. Coach Graffham right now could be in a peculiar situation. Talked about this yesterday. Vogel 41 shy coming in of 3,000. Kingsbury from seven feet behind the arc. That's Gary Kuhnland. And 
He just knocked that one down. Andy Lennon draws the foul. Pass over from Esty. Well, we talked about this yesterday, the fact that Lennon 41, excuse me, Vogel 41 shy of 3,000 points, and he had 40 against him last time. And if he has a huge game here today, he could possibly break the record. He has scored more than 41 in a game in his career. He had 46 in the tournament last season. And Coach Graham said, well, if we see him getting close, we'll, we'll pull him out. But a, in a close game, when you need the guy, you're not going to be able to. So the 3,000-point plateau could happen today. And Vogel is up over 30 right now. Lennon with the steal. Bucket for the senior. 71-69, Westbrook College. Tipped away, another steal. Lennon goes in again, two more. Davies tipped it away. And a timeout called and gotten by Linden State. Good job. Good job. Keep this going job. right now, guys. Good job. Good defense, now, Listen, listen, I want to go 40 heat out of this. 40 heat. And let's keep working and rebound on this end. And then, then get the ball down in. I don't know. I, I think it's, it's the stage man, so you're going to be back, okay? All right, now, listen. Listen, the, the main thing is our intensity level has been up now on this end of the court. That's what's done this whole thing. So let's keep going. Let's go. Come on, guys. Come on, One, two, three. Good job, fellas. Keep it up. Good job, Nate Estes. Nate, good job. Good job. with another bucket. He now has 34 points on the afternoon. Seven points shy. Pull-up jumper floating in is Lions. Foul called on Aaron Wiley. And then he'll send Derek Vogel to the free throw line, shooting one and one. Vogel makes the front end. Vogel makes them both. It's 77-71 with 10 minutes here still to play in the second half. Up and under working the rebound. The long outlet looking ahead for Davies. The nice catch by the former tight end. Drives in, goes for Vogel. Whoa -ho -ho. Derek Vogel. Great pass from Davies. Reed has it stolen. Vogel out ahead for Lennon. He's got two people trailing, goes back for work it. oh! <laughs> 81-71, Westbrook College by 10. Back-to-back -back dunks by Vogel and Workin. Oh, they are playing some basketball now, the Wildcats. Getting it going as Nosek and McKinney will check in. Nine thirty to go, eighty-one seventy-one the score. We'll try it out on top for Dunbar. 
Dunbar will take the three. No good. Corey McClure will get away with a hook on Frankel. Frankel floats in. Won't go down. The ball loose on the floor. Wildcats all over it. Dunbar steps back. Comes over. Kingsbury left alone. He's a three ball. No good. No sick. Gets taken down by Sean Reed. Jumps up and over his back. And no sick. Comes up a little bit hobbled. Good effort by Reed. He was just going up high and Nosek was underneath him. Great action and Kingsbury missing a three when he was wide open. I think Jamie Kingsbury struggles a little bit on the open shot. It's when he's got a hand in the face and a seven feet behind the 19 foot nine inch mark. This has been an excellent game. Linden State certainly picking up the intensity here in the second half. and They've been playing some good basketball as of late under head coach Tim Kelly. Tim Kelly and Dave Meller reverse the roles for the women's program. Meller taking over the job midway through the year for the women's team. and Kelly assists him and now Meller assists Kelly here on the men's team. Both free throws made and it's 83-71. Kenny almost the steal. Austin drives, pushes off. Frankel takes a three. Got it. Big bucket as the shot clock was winding down. Kenny Fakes comes in, rattles it in. 85-74. Wildcats up 11 with eight minutes to play here in the second half. Kingsbury floats in, won't go down. Put back by Austin. He's pushing all over the place. And boy, referees just don't want to call that many fouls, although they started to pick it up here for a while. Andy Lennon and Corey McClure sit down as Aaron McClure and Bob Davies check in. Davies hasn't had any scoring happen for him today, but here in the last five minutes of the game, his defense and passing certainly played a vital role in this burst by Westbrook College. Kenny a three. Off, Davies goes for the save, gets it. Lotus gets triple teamed and he fights for the ball. He's got a hand on it. And it's tied up, Davies and Lions. 85-74 with now 7-16 to play. favoring Westbrook College, so they'll inbound. Davies takes the three, rattles in and out. Lotus tipping it, trying to get it, he does. And gets it out for Bob Davies. Lotus doing a nice job in the paint. Hadn't seen that called yet here this afternoon on a very late three second call. Lotus, another rebound. Now lit up for McKinney. Chris McKinney goes for Aaron McClure. Has it stripped and taken away. Good help defense by the Hornets. Has 
and McCarthy turns it over. Nosek pulls up on the baseline, won't go down. The rebound by Gilbert. Austin, no good. Aaron McClure tips it out of there. We got Nosek, Lotus up ahead. Lotus goes in. Uh, nice block by Austin. They call him for the foul. Darren Austin, a 6'2 sophomore, with an excellent block as he got up with Chris Lotus, but. He's whistled for the foul. Lotus misses the front end. I should say the first two coming. Got the second, 86-74. Nice ball movement, but Reed misses the layup. Inside, what a pass. Lennon for Nosek. And it's 88-74. Melrose kid with a great pass. Dunbar pulls up, rattles in and out. Aaron McClure the rebound, up for Davies. Wildcats still running, what a bounce pass. Oh, my. Lennon, another assist. Aaron McClure, the bucket. 4.35 to go. Wildcats now up 90-74. Darren Austin, nice pass over. And Gilbert gets it down, and they call the foul. Wurtgen and Esty will check into the Wildcat lineup. Aaron McClure and Chris Lotus will sit down. Good effort by those two guys. Boy, they worked it hard, did a great job in that spurt right there. The Wildcats are getting tremendous defense. My goodness, that's how you play the game of defense, folks. Team defense personified. And the free throw missed, and Lennon takes away the rebound from his opposing number 11. Andy Lennon knows rebounds. Andy Lennon knows assists. Andy Lennon knows Derek Vogel and how to get him the ball. Nate Esty in the paint. Won't go down. Tipped up and in. Eric Wirtgen. 6'7 junior out of Essex Junction, Vermont, with a big, big bucket. And the Wildcats keep their 16-point margin. 92-76 with 4.08 to play here in the contest. And a timeout called by Linden State. No let up now. No let up. Good ball movement. Now, now listen, our energy level has done this. So let's be great. great. I, want, I want to go 40. Remember, we don't want to foul right now because the clock is the enemy more than the school board. So let's make sure that we make the clock run and get a hand up on the shooters. Play hard, all right? Here we go. Okay. Come, on, Come on, guys. Now, now, now. You know threes are going up, right? Yep. One, two, three. Wow. Check out. Get away from the board. Check out and get the rebound. Yeah. You're going to love Coach. Jim Grafham and, of course, assistant coach Bruce Bowers and Mike Johnson. And energy level has done it for us, and energy level equals defense, and that has done it for them. And one other guy maybe had something to do with it, All-American Derek Bogle. He's an All-American as a junior, sure to repeat this year as a senior, and approaching 3,000 points in his career. Linden State just gets it in in time. McCarthy takes the three. 
No good. Lennon, the rebound, but taken away from him. Dunbar goes in, throws it up, no good. Gilbert, good work. Rob Gilbert, good effort. Give Linden State credit there. They stayed hard on the boards and did a very nice job. And that, I'm sorry, that's a difficult call. The fan over here to my right made the call for the official, yelled it out. I just don't like that call. I think that's part of the game that should be at least extended. Make it a five second call so you can get five, six, seven seconds in. Three seconds is ridiculous. And a referee can call it just about in every possession if he really wants to. Into Gilbert again, he gets another bucket. And it's not over yet, 12 point game. Rankin going to the hole, gets bumped, gets it to go, no call. Eric Rankin with two consecutive baskets. He's having a great game here in his home state of Vermont. Mackey working the defense. Matt Mackey, as we said, the coaches just love that young man because he works so, so hard. Doesn't have the unbelievable athletic skills, but he gives you everything he's got. Day in and day out. Davies tries for the tip, can't get it. McCarthy around the back, Dunbar pulls in. Takes it, rattles out. Put back by McCarthy. He was left unchecked. 94-80 with 2.55 to play. Andy Lennon penetrates, goes for working, working up and under two more. Another great pass from Andy Lennon. Sean Reed pushes his way in, has it blocked by Eric Warnkin. The Wildcats now, with a bucket here, can just about salt this one away. Bob Davey says, I need a bucket. And he takes it to the hole with authority. 98-82. Kingsbury streaks back, he's gonna launch, and that's usually the ones he makes. And McCarthy coming over the back of Davies. Last to touch it. And it'll be Westbrook College basketball. And now with 2.06 to go and a 16 point lead, the Wildcats got to take care of the ball. But Derek Vogel, 38 points here today. And Coach Graffium took him out with six minutes to go because he saw him approaching the 3,000 point mark. And I ran over there on the last timeout, saw he had 32 and had a chance at doing it, and he scored six points right after that timeout. And Coach Grafham got him out, and the Wildcats, the rest of the team, this is not just a Derek Vogel team. Esty gonna get called for the foul as he got in a tussle down low with, I believe it was Kingsbury. With the clock winding down, that's not what you wanna do. The senior should know better. And he'll sit down. That'll send Jamie Kingsbury to the line, shooting one and one. Kingsbury, sophomore from Bradford, Vermont. But as we said, Vogel at 32, erupted for six more at 38, and only needs 41 to hit three grand. And he could have easily done it here today. And Coach Grafham having enough confidence in the rest of the team and the gang to, to pull Vogel in such a close game. The game was still definitely on the line. And this is not just Derek Vogel team. There is some great basketball players in and out the lineup. A nice bounce pass for Hilchi. He can't control it, but he gets it back on top. Lennon will take a three. Won't go down. Davies keeps it alive. We're down to a minute 14 to go. Kingsbury is going to try to look for his shot here. He's in shooting range now. Linden State can ill afford to use this kind of time on the clock. Nice drive by Dunbar. Linden State gets the 22nd timeout with 54 seconds to play. It's 98-86.
And Westbrook College, as I said, at the top of the cast, have won 20 games or more now four consecutive years. And they're looking to defend their Mayflower Conference title for the third straight year. They've had two straight trips to Idaho looking for the three-beat. And seniors Vogel, Lennon, and Corey McClure are certainly trying to secure that. And after today, it starts the Mayflower Conference Tournament at the Finley Recreation Center on Wednesday night. And more than likely a game against Notre Dame, I believe, for the Wildcats. And then if they can take care of business there, they'll travel to St. Joe's of Vermont, a brand new gymnasium built there and facility in Rutland, Vermont. And that's where the conference championship will be held. It's the first year in three years that the Wildcats haven't won the Mayflower Conference number one seed. They'll go in number three seeded. But that doesn't make them lose any confidence. Randy Lennon takes it to the paint, draws the foul, and he'll go to the free throw line to shoot two with 39 seconds left. Derek Vogel walking up and down the bench, congratulating all his teammates. And I'm telling you what, man is amazing. It's all focus is what Andy Lennon said while he was up here in the broadcast booth. Short again. Aaron McClure almost got the block. Kingsbury coming up the floor. He'll launch again from that red stripe on the floor. He's made a couple there. Wildcats fighting amongst themselves, lose it, and now come away with it. Steve Huntington. He gets fouled. <laughs> Westbrook College moves to 21 and 11. They'll finish up their Mayflower Conference play at 11 and 3. Women's team finished at 12 and 2, and just a tremendous program under the helm of head coach Jim Grafham. I know I speak for my cameraman, Steve Poulos, but just a joy to come here with the team over the weekend and see these young men and women perform and hang out with them a little bit and certainly get a chance to hang out with the coaches. And we just had a wonderful first visit to the Green Mountain State. And we'll be back with them next weekend for the conference tournament. One of two for Huntington, and Hilchi saves it. Gets it back. Bounce pass over for Aaron McClure. And Great passing by the Wildcats, but it won't go down for AM. Austin a three, got it. Too little, too late. 99-89 with three seconds left. Aaron McClure goes up, and he'll just take the W, and that'll do it. Big win and a big game here, great effort, and the crowd Applauds both the Westbrook College and Linden State teams. A marvelous job here this afternoon in a great end-to-end -end basketball game. Wow, Wildcats erupted in a big spurt there and it was all started by the defense and great unselfish basketball. We saw some passing today. Uh, we've seen before, but this was about as good as we have ever seen. Wildcats move the basketball and get it to the open person. Derek Vogel finishes with 38, now three shy of the 3,000-point plateau. He broke Matt Hancock's record on a three ball. Maybe we'll see that in the opening round game this coming Wednesday night where he'll just launch a three, hit 3,000, and then the Wildcats can get to the business at hand. And, of course, we've seen upsets before. Stranger things have happened. So Westwood College is not a guarantee that they'll head into St. Joe's of Vermont on the Final Four weekend, but... Certainly anticipating that. We'll take a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up. And, of course, some post-game interviews from the Hornet Dome right after this.
Welcome back to the Hornet Dome. Jay Harper along with cameraman Steve Poulos. Westbrook College winning this afternoon, improving to 21 and 11, finishing the season 11 and 3 inside the Mayflower Conference. Checking out the scoring today. Wildcats, as per usual, led by All-American Derek Bogle. He had 38 points, 20 in the first half, 18 in the second half, and he sat out the last five and a half to six minutes of the game. Coach Grafham not wanting him to break the record down here and wanted to save it for the first round of the tournament at home at the Finley Recreation Center. It's obviously not a record, but not break the 3,000-point plateau. He has the all-time scoring record inside the state of Maine, and this may be a record that'll stand for a long, long time as Vogel continues to add to that totals. He had 40 last time these two teams met, and there must be something about the mix that he likes about going against Linden State. Eric Wordkin had a big game, and he probably saying finally. He had 16 playing in his home state in front of his uh, parents once again here this afternoon. Corey McClure, the other senior, had nine, as every Wildcat player scored except Garrett Hilchey. McKinney had seven. Nosick had six, as did Andy Lennon. Five for Matt Mackey. And a point apiece for Huntington and Lotus. A bucket apiece for Aaron McClure, Bob Davies, and Nate Esty. And the Wildcats win 99-89 here today. And they trail by seven midway through of the first six minutes of the second half. And they came storming back and took control on the great defensive play and great team passing. Well, we saw some terrific passing today. The Hornets were led by Jamie Kingsbury. Kingsbury finished with 20. Matt McCarthy had 13. And Sean Reed, the Cushing, Maine resident, had 16 points. He usually plays well against Westbrook College. He did, although he didn't have the big second half. He had 11 in the first half, 5 in the second. Kingsbury certainly lit it up, as did McCarthy from three-point land. Final score, 99-89. We'll take a break, come back quickly with a couple of post-game interviews right after this. Welcome back to the Hornet Dome. Jay Harper being joined by Eric Wernke. And Eric, finally having that big game here inside the state of Vermont. 16 points. You guys had a terrific explosion in that second half. The defense certainly sparking the offense and some great passing down there. You finished with 16, but also some great touch passes for yourself. Well, I think it was definitely a defensive intensity. I think uh, Bob Davies and Andy Lenz stepped it up in the, uh, the one-third quarter trap, and they got a lot of steals. And that just that helped our all-around game. And I just fed off that. Now, Derek Vogel, 38 points today, three shy of the 3,000-point plateau. Coach Grafham had to pull him with six minutes to go to make sure he didn't break the record. I mean, he had another tremendous performance. Oh. Well, he, he told me before the game, we're going to get 41, because I go, how close are you to 3,000? And I said, oh, you're not going to get 41, but he would have had it easily if he stayed in it. He's a great player. He's, he's the best player I've played with. I can say that now. Now, as far as the win goes, a great way to head into the Mayflower Conference Tournament, that first round matchup coming up this Wednesday. Certainly, you guys got to stay focused now. Everyone's talking about the final four, but oh, you got to yeah. win the first one. Oh, my worry is that we're even looking back just to the championship game. I think we got to we got to get ready for Wednesday, but we got to look we got to look forward to Castleton too. They're a tough team, and I think they're going to be there. And we're going to have to beat them to get to Green Mountain. So. Now, how did it feel today getting to play inside your home state in front of some of your friends and family and finally getting the big numbers? You had a good game yesterday, yeah. no doubt there, but today you really turned it on. Yeah, it felt great. I've, I've had a little problem playing at Johnson especially, and I, I think I played all right here last year, but this was a good game because it was closer, and I felt like I contributed more, so I'm happy with my performance. All right, a great regular season. Glad to see it with a W, and, of course, get ready for the, the finals coming up and, of course, the Mayflower Conference Tournament coming up this Wednesday, but a strong performance here today. We'll take a pause, and we're going to have that long trek back to the state of Maine. But two big wins here for the Westbrook College Wildcats. This one, 99-89 over Linden State. For my cameraman, Steve Poulos, and my various partners here.